Hello everyone and welcome to video number nine. This video is going to cover the integration methods, integration by parts, and basic trigonometric identities. So in video eight, we learned about U substitution, and this is actually going to be used a lot in this video, so it's important that you remember how it works. So here are the steps. Set U equal to something, differentiate both sides of the equation containing U, isolate dx, plug in u and the value you determine for dx, solve the new integral, and finally undo the substitution. So here is when to use u substitution. And to integrate by partial fractions, you first break down the original fraction into smaller fractions, and then solve using u substitution. So today, we're first going to learn about integration by parts. So the integration by parts formula comes from the product rule. So the product rule states that the derivative of f, f of x times g of x is equal to f prime of x g of x plus f of x g prime of x. And then if we integrate both sides, then on the right side, the derivative and the integral just cancel each other out, leaving us with f of x times g of x. And on the left side, this is what we have. And if we subtract the integral of f of x g prime of x dx, then this is what we get. And this is the integration by parts formula. So how do we use this formula? Well, here's an example problem, the integral of x cosine x dx. So first you assign f prime of x and g of x f of x, f prime of x should be something that's easy to integrate. In this case, cosine x is easy to integrate and differentiate, so it can be either. And g of x should be something that's easy to differentiate. So we set g of x equal to x. We know how to differentiate and integrate x, but it's easier to differentiate it because if you differentiate it, you get one. But if you integrate it, you get x squared over two, and that just makes things more complicated. So we set g of x equal to x. And then we plug in the values determined into the formula. So the integral of x cosine x dx, so basically what the formula tells you is this is equal to x times the integral of cosine x, which is sine of x, minus the integral of the derivative of x, which is one times sine of x dx. All right, and then now we can solve. So the integral of one times sine of x dx, we can just get rid of the one, and that's equal to negative cosine of x. And then finally, at the end, we simplify and add a plus c, and this is our final answer. So here's another example, the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. So we assign f prime of x and g of x, and you can actually assign it either way in this problem. I just assigned f prime of x is equal to cosine of x and g of x is equal to e to the x. So now we use the formula. So the integral of e to the x cosine x dx is equal to e to the x times the integral of cosine x, which is sine of x, minus the integral of the derivative of e to the x, which is still e to the x times sine of x dx. And we still need to solve for this integral right over here. So how can we do that? We can use integration by parts again. So the first time around, we assigned g of x equal to e to the power of x. So this time, we need to assign g, g of x equal to e to the power of x again. Otherwise, it won't work. So anyway, the, the integral of e to the x sine of x dx is equal to e to the x times the integral of sine of x, which is cos negative cosine of x, plus the integral of the derivative of e to the x, which is still e to the x, times negative cosine of x. And well, I just moved the negative out. All right, so now we solve for this integral right over here. So we plug that in to our original integral. All right, so now we simplify. And notice that right here, we have the, the integral of e to the x cosine x dx on both sides. So we can just move this over to the left side. 
and then divide by two to get that the final answer is e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine of x all over two and plus c. So here's a practice problem. And if you want, then pause the video and go ahead and give this a problem a try. So the solution is to imagine it as one times ln x dx. And um, we know how to differentiate. We know the derivative of ln x, so we set that equal to g, g of x. And then f prime of x would therefore be 1. So then the integral of 1 times ln x dx is equal to the integral of 1, which is x, times ln x minus the integral of x times the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x. All right, and then now simplifying. So x times 1 over x, that's just 1. And then the integral of 1 dx is just x. So this is our final answer, x ln x minus x plus c. All right, here's another practice problem. So here's the answer. So you set g of x equal to x squared because x squared is easier to differentiate than integrate. If you integrate it, you'll get x cubed and something. But if you differentiate it, you'll just have a degree one. So therefore, it's easier to differentiate than integrate. So we set g of x equal to x squared. And f prime of x is therefore equal to e to the x. And the integral of x squared times e to the x dx is therefore equal to x squared times the integral of e to the x, which is still e to the x, minus the integral of the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, times e to the x dx. And now we need to solve for this integral right over here. So we can use integration by parts again. So g of x is equal to 2x. All right, so the integral of 2x e to the power of x dx is equal to 2x times the integral of e to the power of x, which is still e to the power of x, and minus the integral of the, the derivative of 2x, which is just 2 times e to the power of, of x. And the integral of 2 times e to the power of x dx is just equal to 2 e to the power of x. All right, so now going back to our original integral, and plugging in. So then we get that the bottom. And then after simplifying, we get that the bottom row is our final answer. So here's another practice problem. And here is the solution. So we imagine it as one times arc tangent of x dx, just like we did for the integral of ln x problem. So we know the derivative of arc tangent of x, so we set that equal to g of x. And now the integral of 1 times arc tangent of x dx is equal to the integral of 1, which is x times arc tangent of x, minus the integral of x times the derivative of arc tangent of x, which, is, which we just saw is 1 over x squared plus 1. All right, and then now we have this integral right over here. And we can solve this using u substitution. So we imagine that this is equal to 1 half times the integral of 2x over x squared plus 1 dx. And we see we have x squared plus 1 and its derivative, 2x. So we set u equal to x squared plus 1. And then differentiating both sides of the equation, d over dx is equal to 2x. And we isolate dx. And then plugging in the values we got. So x squared plus 1 is equal to u. dx is equal to du over 2x. And then now the 2x in the numerator and the denominator cancel each other out. So then we're just left with the integral of 1 over u du, which is just ln of the absolute value of u. And then we unsubstitute. So u is equal to x squared plus 1. And then now going back to our original problem and plugging in what we just solved. So we get that the final answer is x times arctangent of x minus 1 half times ln of the absolute value of x squared plus 1 plus c. 
So here is when you, you want to use integration by parts. When you're trying to take the integral of the product of two functions, because remember that the integration by parts formula is the integral of f prime of x times g of x. That's basically a product of two functions. And make sure you know the integral of one function and the derivative of the other, because you're going to have to integrate one of the functions and differentiate the other one. And the second time you want to use integration by parts is when you're trying to take the, the integral of a function that you know the derivative of. So like we just saw, the integral of ln x and the integral of arctangent of x. All right, so now we're moving on to the basics of trigonometric identities. And many trigonometric identities are based off of these ones. All right, so if you want, you can pause the video and, and go ahead and remember these. But anyway, now we're going to get into the double angle identities. They're based off of the previous ones. So sine of x, sine of 2x, you can imagine that as sine of x plus x. And then using this identity right over here, you'll get sine of x cosine of x plus cosine of x sine of x. And these two are, terms are basically the same. So in the end, you get two sine of x cosine of x. And with a similar process for the cosine of 2x, you'll get that that is equal to cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. All right, using the Pythagorean identity, we can transfer the, the we can transform the second double angle identity into something useful for integration. So this was a second double angle identity. All right, and then from the Pythagorean identity, we can solve that cosine squared of x is equal to one minus sine squared of x. So now plugging that into the double angle identity. And then simplifying, we get that cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 times sine squared of x. All right, here's a practice problem, and you're going to have to use this identity. Here's the solution. So you first isolate sine, sine squared of x in the identity. You'll get 1 half minus cosine of 2x over 2, and then you plug that in. And then now you just take the integral of each term and carry out the constant. So the integral of cosine 2x dx, you need to solve for that. And you can do that using u substitution. So set u equal to 2x, and then du over dx is equal to 2, and isolate dx. And now plug in 2x is equal to u, and dx is equal to du over 2. So now. You can carry out the constant one half and you're left with the integral of cosine u du, which is just sine of u. And then undoing the substitution, u is equal to two x. All right, so this was our original integral and we've just solved for this integral right over here. So plugging that in. And then after that, we simplify and get that. This is our final answer, 1 half x minus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus c. So here's another practice problem, and you're going to need to use these two trigonometric identities. Here's the solution. So cosine of 2x is equal to, to cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. And then the Pythagorean identity, this time, instead of isolating cosine squared of x, you're going to isolate sine squared of x. And then now plugging in the value into right here, and then simplifying, you'll get that cosine of 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. And then now you want to isolate cosine squared of x, and you'll get cosine of 2x over 2 plus 1 half. So now, we can plug that in and then take the integral of each term. And we have a one half right over here. So we just carry it out. And we've just solved for the integral of cosine 2x dx. It's one half sine of 2x. And the integral of one half dx is just one half x. So then our final answer is one fourth sine of 2x plus one half plus c. And that's the end of this video. So now, if you want, you can watch the optional additional video on integration by trigonometric substitution 
and half angle identities. It's a pretty short video, but if you don't want to watch it, that's fine. And this is, this is it for integration. So in video 10, we're going to start learning about applications of limits, derivatives, and integrals. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in video 10.